In this episode, we're going to pull the Craftsman mower out of our pile of scrap mowers and see if we can get it running. see what we got just walking around the thing we have it's in you know fairly usable shape uh, missing the plastic covers and obviously this uh, deck height switch mounts somewhere in there I don't know if we'll be able to find those this deck wheel that needs rebent reshape there which will take care of that this wheel over here obviously someone's been dragging and pushing it because they didn't care too much for it so we got a battery in it uh, we have a seat switch. We do have a seat switch. Let's start it. Uh, let's see. This engine, I believe we checked the oil in this before, but it's black, but it's there and it's relatively full. Good enough to see if she turns over. Uh, PTO is off. Ignition is off. We got throttle and choke there. Unfortunately, our air cleaner is way back here. Well, let me see what the gas smells like. I yeah, don't know how old this is. But... Mm, it, um, it smells... <laughs> it might be burnable. What we got here? Oh, nothing like an old rag or somebody's underwear that they <laughs> were using as a rag. We'll just leave that there. Now, generally, when I'm starting these up for the first time in a while, I like to give it a shot of ether just to save the starter motor because a lot of people just crank and crank and crank and crank and that doesn't tell you whether it's going to start or not that just tells you whether it's going to crank so we want to know whether it's actually going to fire so you know we'll give her a about 16 gallons of ether there I'm sure that won't hurt anything I don't know if we have to be on the seat switch or not but she won't turn over. Is that the parking brake on? I don't know. We have to be sitting on it. We probably have to be out. Well, I don't want to cooperate, but it is relatively loose, but back her up a little bit here to get a full run on the compression stroke. Try it again. Contact. <laughs> okay. Uh, spark plug on this puppy. Wasn't buried down there. Another way to do this is we're just gonna put a spark tester on here real quick. Just so I don't waste battery power trying to crank it over if it's not actually getting spark. We're gonna put our spark tester on here. It's still in line with the plug, so uh, it will actually still, it will run with that. It'll still fire if it does actually manage to make a revolution here, but let's try it again. Don't wanna go past the compression stroke, which could be the battery. These batteries aren't the best, but again. I didn't see anything. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. Let me put some shade on that. No, well, I might have gotten a little bit, but it's hard to tell. It's bright daylight here, so let's see if I can filter out the light. Yeah, I saw a, I saw a spark of a light, so we're getting some spark there. We just can't get her to fire around because of the weak battery. Get back on there. Yep, there we go. Okay. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know if that sparks enough to actually do anything, but I'll give her, you know, another six gallons of ether just because. Right. 
Up an auxiliary battery. Come on. You can do it, baby. It helps if you don't push the, push the controls in. Okay, we need an auxiliary battery. Okay, we have our dead battery and our slightly less dead battery. Jumper cable together with a set of 25-year-old jumper cables. Here, yeah, what can go wrong? Let's see if she'll spin over now. Well, obviously not. Past the compression stroke to minimize the maximum momentum here. Well, he wants to go, we just don't have the battery to do it. Come on now. I'm just going to pull the plug here and uh, see what it turns like. It turns over like without the spark plug. And that'll kind of give us an idea of whether the starter is weak, or whether our battery is weak. We just tried to hook a couple batteries in tandem and we tried to jump start it from an actual running vehicle mower. And we got pretty much the same result. So could be the starter is just terribly weakened. Well, that plug is just terribly black. Okay, well. Set that aside. All right, let's see what it turns over like without a spark plug. All right, we'll just give her a little bit of extra lubrication in there. To, if I can actually hit it. Oops. Oh, terrible shot! My goodness, it's like when you get up in the morning and never mind. All right. <laughs> So she hadn't been turned over in a good long while. So this is a this is a pressure lubrication system. So hopefully that got oil circulated through it. We can just help it turn over easier, build up pressure, and get that. I think I'm just gonna take a wire brush to that real quick. All right. This is the quick and dirty method of getting all that carbon and junk off of here real quick just uh again for testing purposes we'll probably put a new plug in it if she actually we get to the tune-up part she actually runs here so let's get all that junk off of there and maybe she'll want to fire a little bit more for us long are these threads my goodness come on now well okay down there put our spark plug wire back on and we'll probably be right back where we were before but Let's see if we made any progress. Probably not. Oh, well, we've actually made a little bit there. We wanted to turn over. I got a full revolution out of that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. So we're going to hook it to our even less not so good battery in the old work truck here with our not so great jumper cables. Let's see what's going on. Probably nothing. Oh, look at that, nothing. All right, what am I forgetting here? Parking brake? Parking brake, check. Okay, let me pull this fuel tank out so we can get to the starter and then we'll 
try directly hooking it to the starter and see if the batteries, dead batteries, fighting us or what's going on. So, right. okay, so we're hooked to the truck battery here, which you know it's a lot bigger, even if it's it'll start that truck. So we're gonna direct wire the starter basically here and we'll see if it turns over if it wants to actually turn over now that'll mean that our starter is okay if it still does the same thing and wants to stick on the compression stroke that means our starter is probably wearing out so contact cool. it just... I think our starter is well, about weak. Yeah, so I think we're gonna need to replace the starter. These things are really getting hot. That thing's drawing a lot of amperage. We know that the motor's not seized. It turns over, obviously, because we take the plug out. It just doesn't have the power to turn over on that compression stroke. So we're gonna see if we can salvage a starter from one of these other mowers here, since this is just a standard. Briggs and Strat and, and uh, we'll place the starter and then we'll try her again. Okay, so we've got starter from one of our non-running mowers. It was frozen, so I took the liberty of stripping it apart. It's only slightly corroded. But here's the thing, there's no corrosion inside the bearing surface in there. And the contacts are okay. And this bearing, it was a little stiff, but it's okay. We loosened it up bearing bushing whatever it is more likely a bushing these are really bushing so we're going to clean off this cap we're going to clean everything up we're going to put it back together and then we're going to see how well it works will it work i don't know probably not so we'll just scrub all the corrosion off of here it was so jammed up that it won't even turn over off of the truck battery but you know usually if the bearings get get uh, corroded can't turn it over with the electrical power. Uh, I have done this before <laughs> mm, a couple times successfully. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Key thing is are the brushes intact, are the contacts intact, and are the bearings intact? I mean other than of course your windings and everything in the motor, which are generally okay. Just, uh, just kind of just lightly ever so lightly you don't want to be aggressive on this because you don't want to put score marks or anything in your contacts you just want to take off any corrosion or buildup on your motor contacts this seems to be pretty good here just make sure you don't have any stuff in there let's set that aside and move to the inside again it's pretty clean you can see the brushes down there still have life left not much corrosion got inside between the magnet and the steel core so that's good so we'll clean that out we'll set the brushes and we'll put it back together again okay so we got our end cap with way too much lube on it way too much and we have our core and brushes back our uh, rotor and brushes back in which it's a pain i could have filmed that but i didn't you gotta there's four brushes and you gotta hold them all while you put the rotor in so a lot easier just to fight it off camera and then you have 18 hands because if you try to film it well you need 16 hands and we'll just put this back together maybe it'll work maybe it won't I don't know I'm gonna find out We don't know whether this motor actually turned over before, and we don't know how much force it had. I do know the one that was in the mower was just blazing hot when I took it out. I couldn't even touch it. So, well, that's not good. What did I do there? Okay. Clearly, whatever it is, that snapped. We don't need that, so. Okay, it turns. Turns relatively good. Let's take it over here and that's a nice 
negative. Assuming I'm hooking this up right. I don't know what's going on here. It's a bad connection? Is it busted inside? What's going on? Okay, so pet starter, it might have a bad winding or something. I don't have the energy to put a meter on it. This is the one that we took out of the Craftsman mower. And it is still just sitting here, it is still just blazing hot. It doesn't want to turn very nicely. We're going to take it apart, we're going to see what's inside. Sometimes you can rebuild them, sometimes you can't. We got we got some metal particles. Bearing looks okay. Oh, we got some pitting on the outside of that bushing. Sorry, bushing not bearing. Uh, I still still feel some chunkiness in there. She wants to kind of be notchy about it. Not necessarily a good thing, but all right. Let's see if we can surgically retract our brushes. Whatever. We'll just... Oh, we kept two of them. One thing you don't want to do is mix up where the brushes go. Okay, so we got the rotor here. Uh, it was a little bit, felt a little bit chunkier on turning it than the other one because it has four magnets instead of two. So you get every quarter degree it wants to snap to that magnet. So that's why it felt a little different than the other motor. And the rotors. This one actually is a little beefier, but uh, we did kind of lube up this pushing in here and she was a little bit stiff. What concerns me the most about this is there's, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's pitting on the contact which means there is some electrical arcing or a lot of electrical arcing in there and that's probably where heat was coming from. So I don't know if putting this back together will actually fix our problem. I cleaned them up as best I could, but that pitting is still in there and it's fairly deep. I mean, to get rid of that, you'd probably have to sand it down a little bit, which might be our next step if this doesn't work. We're gonna put it back in and with it cleaned up and, and greased up and we're going to clean this end cap up in the bushing and so uh, we'll be back with you in a minute when we have that put back together. I don't know if this is going to work. It feels a little bit, a little bit more friendly. There's only one way to find out. as long as this can spin free or relatively free. All right, there's wire on here. Again, I don't give much chance of this actually working, but you never know. Moment of the truth, I don't expect miracles. <laughs> It's chewing into the plastic. Again. I wanted to spin there first. trouble starting this we've tried a couple different starters this doesn't want to turn the engine over properly with the spark plug in when it's under full compression uh, it, it turns over fine when the spark plugs out and everything and we've checked all the electrical we've we've checked the solenoid we've tried even replacing it with a brand new one uh, we've we've checked the whole electrical system we've made sure the grounds are okay we've even run 
uh, a, a dedicated ground wire direct to the starter casing. So we've been doing our research. This is a 21 horsepower Briggs and Stratton. And we don't have a lot of experience with this exact engine. Worked on a lot of Briggs and Strattons, mostly the smaller ones, 18 horse and down. It, the 20 horse single cylinder Briggs and Stratton engines apparently are really picky about starters. And so the starters we're using, they're used and they're made for 17, 18 horse. And though most sources say they're okay to use with these engines and even the part numbers match and everything, turns out the internet says that these things are really, really picky and only the genuine Briggs and Stratton correct part number starters will really do the job long term. So we bit the bullet, spent the money for the genuine Briggs and Stratton starter. So we're going to put this in and we're going to hope that this takes care of the starting issues. And if it doesn't, we're going to try. I don't know. So pop this starter in. We'll see what happens. And then we'll get back with you. I've got an auxiliary cable here to kind of beef up the starter cable. So what we've got here is we've got an auxiliary ground direct from the battery to the starter casing. We've got a double, basically a double thickness starter cable. And we've got a nice big cable from the battery to the solenoid. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Again, probably if I back it off the compression stroke and let it wind up a little bit, it'll probably fire. It'll probably spin. Let's. Well, I mean, that fired up and it's not even hooked to a gas tank. It definitely wants to run. The problem is the still the starter. But it hits that comp compression stroke and. Oh, well, back to the drawing board. So the, I mean, the starter cables are not getting hot like they, this hot, the starter's getting hot. I mean, it's definitely a, a torque issue here. So I guess we'll go back and do some more research on this thing. I just, it's not fun. So, back to the drawing board. Okay, so we are going to pull the valve cover and check our valve adjustment. Uh, that was a lot of work to just verify that the internals of the engine were okay. But new bolts that's not a good sign I don't know if I said it before but you know I have my suspicions somebody was into this engine before probably with the same problem clearly someone has pulled the engine before I don't think this valve cover gasket's original either it looks like RTV so these bolts are grade 8 Brand new. So, yep. Let's take a look. Probably this is all futile because probably it's the last person tried all this and it didn't work, but we are gonna give it our best shot. There's always a chance that they didn't know what they were doing. I mean not like I know what I'm doing. 
there's a good chance that it didn't follow the proper procedures. Not that I'm following that. Never mind. You got it. is on something like this you just never know without taking it apart whether that compression release is bad if I, I could have taken this off and done this earlier and I probably should have um, oh my goodness okay we've got well let me bring you over here and show you what we've got going on here and you'll understand maybe okay so what we've got here is we've got the intake valve, it was very loose, but I've got the intake valve, uh, looks brand new, and everything's very loose. We've got a spacer down here. This is the spacer off of the exhaust valve, and this is the intake that opens on compression release. It still has the spacer in it, but this spacer is supposed to be up there between the rocker arm and the valve stem. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to adjust everything. Uh, I believe the proper procedure is to take it a uh, quarter, quarter turn past or before top dead center. i got to check that out. And then use a feeler gauge and adjust these accordingly. So... Uh, let me look up the specs and uh, we'll get back to it. Okay, so we've adjusted the we've adjusted the valves using our feeler gauges, and that's a standard procedure, so no point going over that. So these are just just a hair. That's about how they should be. So when I right now the engine is a quarter quarter inch, the piston's down a quarter inch past up to top dead center, so when I rotate it, we should see just that little compression release bump in this intake valve. It should just blip it right before the compression stroke, so. So there's the exhaust stroke. Now the intake valve is opening the intake charge, and there, right there. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. There's just a little bit of a little bit of a bump, and that's the compression release. So it does appear to be working. There's the exhaust again. There's the intake stroke, and there's that little compression release bump. Okay, so we should be all right to put everything back together. Well, I gotta scrape this gasket, and clearly someone else has been in here because this is RTV. So scrape that and. Put everything back together and then we'll see if it fires up normally. Alright, we got it back together mostly. Uh, we'll put it, turn it over. So that, okay, there's the compression stroke, so let's uh, see if she fires up. <laughs> it works. Engines run really good when they're adjusted properly, I guess, and when everything's working. It's not the best valve train system in the world, but, you know, for what it is, we got to fasten down our fuel tank and square away some other things here. There's, uh, the, this thing has an electric deck on it, and this is the adjustment for it deck up and down and it works but the plastic surround pieces are missing I looked at getting them but 
it's just I don't think it's worth it we're gonna not for what this I mean it's a used mower and so we'll rig up something we'll, we'll fabricate something to mount this switch about where it was supposed to be a piece of metal or a plate or something and we'll figure that out other than that I'll shine her up and give her some service we already changed the oil there so and she'll be ready to go I think we fixed this front tire over here uh, this one was not holding air but I think we finally got it to hold air we'll see now that I've said that it probably won't but I think that's pretty much it for this mower everything else works and runs and operates great the seats in great shape and uh, she'll be ready to go we've got to make something to hold this switch we got part left over from one of the old Aaron's mowers just gotta widen that hole a little bit this is nice thick metal and it's kind of pre-bent into the shape we want so that's why I'm picking I'm gonna cut out a section drill some bolt holes clean it up paint it and put it on there and it'll be very sturdy because it's nice thick metal and I don't have to bend anything and you know because I'm lazy so we'll do that you know do our quick fab work and then we'll get on board I guess uh, <laughs> need some electricity of the mower revival episodes we've got one more coming so if you want to watch that or if you want to go back to part one just check out our uh, playlists on our channel and always we appreciate it if you subscribe thank you